that's always a big deal when Santa Cruz launch a new bike and particularly so when it's a new Nomad and this is the new Nomad version 4 and you may have seen it sneak little spy shots online at some point recently but this is hopefully the first time you've seen it in the flesh in production form the right graphics and everything as uh, as it's going to be available to purchase biggest surprise certainly for me anyway maybe for some of you guys as well is that it's running 27.5 inch wheels the reasons for that are pretty simple um, that 29 inch wheels are just more difficult to package into a longer travel bike when you've got to use a full range of frame sizes the travel has gone up by five millimeters to 170 millimeters. They want to keep the chain stage relatively short as well. So those factors meant that 29 inch wheels just weren't really an option. So what else is new about, about this new Nomad? Well, obviously the next biggest thing on here is the move to V10 style, uh, lower link actuated shock. So rather than having it mounted up under the top tube and actuated by the upper link they're actuating it off the lower link it means they can run a longer eye to eye shock and they can fiddle about with the kinematics and give it a better uh, improved suspension feel you know gradually over the years the vpps have been kind of smoothing out their little kind of hammocky sort of feel where they sort of settled into the sag position. So the two goals that they wanted to achieve with the new kinematics and configuration is they wanted a more supple beginning stroke and they wanted a more supportive mid stroke. And they've done that with the move to the new lower link configuration. The new Nomad will be available with a, both a, an air shock and a coil shock. So you can basically choose how you want to run your Nomad. Today I've been, riding the trying out the coil shock for the last two days I've been riding the air shock so I'll talk about a little bit about the differences of those in a minute you know not every enduro bike is perfect for running a coil shock on and the progression on the Nomad probably means that it is one of those bikes a couple of little features also to talk about here you've got a little kind of mud guard there because obviously it's kind of in the firing line from rear wheel splatter and you may be able to see down there as well, there is now a bearing in the shock eyelet at the, the lower link. Another area where they've improved small bump sensitivity. The other thing you may have noticed that it's now got a geometry adjust chip at the rear eyelet. Um, so there's high and low settings, a 0 0.4 degree change in head angle and seat angle and it'll change the BB height by five millimeters. I've been running it in the high setting for the last three days riding. The low setting you might want to use if you're doing sort of bike parky stuff and just pure gravity stuff, uh, anything really involving pedaling, I don't think you'd probably want to use it because I'm already getting an awful lot of pedal strikes uh, and that's even with 170 mil cranks. Let's move on to some of the other things and as you can also probably see I managed to get rid of the second upright there's only now one upright on the non-drive side so they removed that mainly again due to packaging um, so they wanted to obviously get the decent clearance for the wide trail tires they wanted to keep the chains these relatively short they needed obviously the split seat tube for the shock to go through. The geometry has also changed on the new Nomad as you probably would expect. The reach has grown by around 22 millimeters on the large which is now 460 mil reach and there is also an XL size so size range goes from extra small to extra large. Chain stays have shrunk a tiny bit. Wheelbase on this large is according to the spec is 1217. Overall takeaway sizing wise is that the large is now a really good fit if you're a kind of 
fairly average height, 5'10", 5'11". I'm running, I think it's a 150 dropper on here and it's like absolutely perfect. So the standos, standovers are kind of lower and then they're a lot more aligned across the range. I'm running quite a few spaces uh, underneath the stem. So there's plenty of room if, if you like, if you want to put some more weight over the front wheel, if you want to drop them down. Uh, and it's the same on the XL as well. So you, you're not getting kind of forced into really high bar heights if you do want to go to a, to a larger frame size. What else we can talk about? Well, still got bottle cage mount. We've still got the same kind of Santa Cruz, typical Santa Cruz cable routing. Uh, internal cable routing except for the rear brake hose which is external uh, the one problem with that is for UK riders you are going to get some rubbing with the rear brake hose unfortunately unless you, you know you can obviously get your frame protected but it's not the cleanest brake routing if you run your rear brake on the left apparently that's only 10% of Santa Cruz buyers so that's why they haven't kind of found an, a neater solution to that. So we've got the new Santa Cruz carbon rims here which are an asymmetric design uh, they're called the reserve these are the reserve 30s which indicates a 30 millimeter internal width uh, as you can see they've got these funky re spoke reinforcements uh, engineered into the the molding um, they've got a kind of smooth molding inside um, been really good over the last three days of hammering in uh, the Provence area like the like the current Nomad the there will be a C and the CC carbon versions see this is the CC model here. This is the X01 version, although there's a couple of little changes that won't be on the spec of the production model. I and mean, that's the the X01 version won't get the bearing eyelet um, super deluxe shock, and you'll get the new Lyric fork. This isn't the new Lyric fork. That's the old version. Reserve wheels will be obviously an option. They'll be a significantly cheaper option than the Envy's. So um, I guess a lot bringing the, uh, the affordability of the carbon wheel option to a lot more people. And that's about it for the kind of new features on the bike. So if we're gonna talk about a little bit about how the bike rides well the first few days of riding it with the air shock it was mightily impressive as an all, all rounder very light very agile super efficient to pedal without touching the com compression pedal platform tended to work well with a little bit of low speed compression on there so it's a good bike for switching lines for like having playing around on the terrain feels great at speed even on the tight twisty stuff it's it's easy enough to maneuver around so it's it's been a super versatile bike a lot more versatile than uh, you, you maybe would consider looking at the numbers on paper I was really surprised with the with the coil shock it's been ab absolutely fantastic it's uh it's really kind of brought the bike into its own it's just it's given it another like five ten percent uh, of performance and it's it's what it does it gives you it gives you more grip at the rear wheel it's definitely more supple than the air shock it does give you more support as well in the mid stroke uh, it's still per absolutely progressive enough as well uh, and it and you just ride it with more aggression you start playing around you just turn into a bit of a kid you can't help like hitting hitting stuff harder and faster and just fling, flinging the thing around more because you've just got more grip and it's just more lively and uh, if you kind of want something that's that's a, a big capable bike but you're also going to pedal it for long days in the saddle uh, and really kind of use a mix of terrain 
then the Airshock is, is probably the better option. You're just going to save a bit of weight and it's just a bit more versatile. But um, really sings with the coil shock on. Other than that, it climbs so well for a, a long travel bike. Sleep seat angle, pedal's really good. You just got to be wary of clipping things with your with your pedals. It's it's uh, if any kind of little rock steps or anything, you've really got to time your pedal strokes correctly. So yeah, I think uh, the new Nomad is is uh, from the last three days of riding. We've done a lot, I've done a lot of riding on it. Really, um, a real mix of terrain. We've come from. France, we've come from Sospel in France, uh, across to Italy, across the border, and it's proved brilliant. Um, done everything you could possibly want from it and had a, had a great time riding it. Seem to have kind of moved the game on with the new Nomad. Um, there you go, look out for it. Um, I'm sure it will be a hit when, it, when it's in the shops. If, uh, if you're lucky enough to be able to afford one, you're probably gonna have a great time on it. Ha, ha, ha.